Hey everyone, welcome back to Remember This Tech. As you see behind me, I've got a big pile of parts. And a big pile of parts means a new build. This one is going to be what I call the ultimate Windows 98 build, 98 SE. It's called ultimate because I think it's my ultimate build, but everybody can have a spin on that. Your ultimate parts, your ultimate graphic cards, your ultimate CPU, whatever. This is what I've got and I'm gonna try to get it to work. Now, you know how finicky that Windows 98 is because getting those drivers to work, not much is supported at all. You have to go way back. Certain chipsets aren't supported. Got the uh, GA31 uh, MX chipset here, and it's a socket 775 board. And I've got two different processors. One is a 9500 quad core, 2.8 gigahertz. And we're gonna see if we can get that to work first. Windows 98 is only gonna see one core and utilize one core, but. And then I've got a number of video cards. This board supports PCI Express, and that's what we're gonna use today. I've watched many videos, people say, oh, they can't use what AGP is gonna support it. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna see if it can get it to work. Maybe it won't, but that's what we're gonna find out. And we're gonna stick it over here in this micro ATX case. Got the good old AutoG Sound Blaster 2ZS card I'm gonna use. PNY, 120 gig, it's a brand new drive, it was really cheap, it was like $13, so. And I partitioned it for two 60 gig partitions and we'll probably have to do it again, format it uh, for FAT32. And then I've got a couple video cards like I showed you. 128 meg, brand new 6200. PCI Express from Asus. It's uh, got that on eBay for 20 some dollars. And this is my good old trusty 8800 GTS. 640 meg card. If we can get that beast to work, that's, that's gonna be the top goal that I'm shooting for, for this build. I got 512 meg RAM sticks. Windows 98 is so picky with the RAM. I think with a patch you can get one gig of RAM supported. Maybe it was two, I can't remember, but if I had 256 or 128 meg stick, I would use that just for the build, but I don't. The lowest I have is 512 meg, and that may be a problem. A uh, good old floppy drive, which we probably won't need. 550 watt Cooler Master 80 plus modular power supply, and I have a plug-in just with the 12 uh, volt four pin Molex on there, so that's good. And I have some adapters. Uh, like this right here that go into that four pin for like other devices. And if this doesn't work, I have this SD card adapter for IDE. And this board does have IDE controller and one IDE port on it in case we can't get the SATA um, drives to work. The SATA, the SATA controller and the SATA drives. So without further ado, let's jump right into this build Let's start assembling it. Let's plop in the CPU. Let's get some thermal paste in there and let's start going. This is gonna be great. The chip's technically gonna only fit one way and on these there's a little notch here and it should fit into the notch in the board. And uh, little golden arrows in this one does as well, but that's kind of like a no brainer for people out there. I'm only going to put in a 512 stick of RAM. And this board does have two slots, but uh, yeah, we're just gonna put one in for right now. I'm gonna see if I can pop off this cooler and I maybe put a little bit of thermal paste on these two coolers as well. So I took off the uh, chipset heat sink on the board and the paste is all just caked and dried on. Key tip. Those little springs that uh, hold it in place uh, shot off like a rocket, so don't lose it. Uh, you have a tough time getting it back on. That stuff's so caked on there. Like hard rubber scraper, and then sometimes they can get under there and kind of like scrape it. Sometimes they can't. This stuff is all brittle and gross. So, and then once you get some of that off, you go through there and you use cotton swabs and isotropic alcohol and clean it up. It's almost done. Just a tiny dollop. Back the way you took it off.
We got this A50 Antec cooler that I got. Or we could see if we can get this to fit. And then I got this for like 20 bucks on uh, Amazon. Assembly that you are, your board supports. So 775. I was gonna put this on a build for my Windows 98 machine. Look at how this cooler is bent to the side. It came from the factory that way. This Antec A50 cooler, got it from Amazon. How am I supposed to put that on my build? It's not even flat. I mean, come on, really? What kind of luck is that? So, the other cooler was bent, physically bent. I put this i5 cooler on there. It works so far. And it's not meant for it, it's meant for a 1200 socket, but it fit perfectly, so we're gonna continue on and see if this works. I just hate these coolers because they kind of bend the PCB and I hate it. I ordered a new cooler. We'll use it until we get the new one in. We're using this micro ATX case. It's got a giant fan in the back. It's got bays in the front. And we've got some uh, CD-ROM bays. And put this board in, do some preliminary uh, power-ups with the power supply. Make sure everything works on the board. Posts, recognizes the chip, memory. Check the cooling, make sure it's not going to overheat with this last minute cheap Intel CPU cooling fan edition. Well, I got it off of Facebook Marketplace and it was like, oh, I got it for 20 bucks. Brand new in the box. Phenomenal deal. And again, when you're putting the screws in, secure, in the motherboard, you don't want to over tighten them or tighten them. You want to make sure that the graphic card you're going to use is going to line up correctly into your case here, you know, and you might have to slide it a little bit, adjust it, so. Asus card I showed you earlier, the 128-6200. Connect up all your peripherals and your power supply. Uh, of course, uh, this is another item. This board is off of eBay. I think I paid uh, $31 for it in shipping. This is the 550 watt fully module layer 80 plus cooler master and plug it into the unit and in this case um, this mother board supports ATX 24 pin I don't have to use an adapter great thing because it's already long enough cable and well I don't need any more board uses a four pin Molex to the board for power so everything's set up i got this it's a windows 98 se boot disk kind of like your floppy uh disk back in the day that boots windows 98 you can use it to, you know, like do basic commands, partition the drives. So if it sees the drive, uh, we'll format it, uh, FAT32. Fingers crossed, let's make this work. Let's get it going. Old school retro build time. Windows 98 second edition, bam, come on. I'm gonna see if it powers on. Power's on. And uh, CMOS checks on my error. Let's seize my drive, that's good. 90% chance we're gonna have to go and replace the CMOS battery. That's another tip. Always, always have a CMOS uh, battery on hand. Boot this up, we got the battery in. Let's go into the BIOS. Let's reset the settings. Seize the processor, 2.833 gigahertz. I have going in here we won't mess with that later let's save and exit and let's see if it will recognize the USB I don't see it coming up is it coming up hey it is uh, yes 
So hopefully I put the right uh, USB boot stick in there. And hopefully, um, so you want to create a primary DOS partition. Why we're choosing that is because we need it to be able to boot from there. And we have our two partitions, you can see it. And then what we want to do is select one because that's going to be our primary DOS. Let's delete it because sometimes there's a problem. And we want to delete primary. Now we have to go back in and create it. So we'll escape and we'll reboot and we're going to have to format it. Primary, set it as primary and I formatted the disk again. Starting Windows 98 CD, fingers crossed, double fingers crossed. See if it will uh, let me uh, do this. Bam! Bam, 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 bam! Like I said before, Windows 98 is always it's temperamental. Sometimes you gotta go through the steps properly to make sure you create those partitions. Set as primary, go back out, and then reformat the disk. It's a whole process. So that's why you need that boot floppy, boot USB, right boot order. So let's keep going on this installation. All right, great. All right, got a keyboard and it works. Let's see how fast this is. Again, we got this uh, Core 2 Quad 9500 CPU at 2.83 gigahertz. There's only 512 mega RAM in there. Hopefully it doesn't have an issue because I have no smaller sticks. 60 gig PNY SSD on the SATA port formatted in, I made two partitions, 260 gig. Windows 98, hopefully coming alive. Hopefully it didn't freeze up on me. See, ROM drive is spinning up. I can hear it. Please don't freeze up on me. You got this, you got this. Power through, power through, you got this. See Windows, yes, that's where I want this, thank you. Yeah, you can select, customize everything, I suppose. But I want to choose the most common things. I want themes. I want all the themes. Yes, 24 minutes it says to install. That's because I'm doing it from a C-ROM. I used to copy the cabs right to the hard drive and extract them from there, it's what I used to do. Comment below if you remember that. This is exciting. I haven't done this in 20 plus years, minimum. Going back in the past, nostalgia-wise. Type down below, give me a comment, tell me what you think about 98SE. Tell me what your favorite retro OS is. Let me know in the comments below. If you're excited like me, keep watching. This works. Ah, where's my key? Took the key. Probably do some boots, maybe some blue screens, maybe who knows. a parallel port and, and a serial port on the back of the board. It knows what that is. See? Parallel. It knows what the printer port is. <laughs> wow. One out of a hundred. Thank you, Windows 98. You got this. PCI card? Hmm. Why do I even bother? Yeah, we don't know. We'll fix you later. Wow, that's great. Let's restart. I think you just want to get to the main desktop. Oh, crap. And, and we can't hear nothing because we don't have any sound. Windows 98, guys! Did it! Windows 98. Windows 98! The most powerful Windows 98 machine ever! Not really, but to me it is. 
Core 2 Quad 9500 processor. Bam! With an SSD and a 6200 uh, NVIDIA graphics card, which hopefully can resolve some of the driver issues. Uh, the INS for the chipset and some benchmarks install. Oh, it worked. The mouse worked. The, the optical mouse worked. Let's go and see what we have as far as 98 second edition. It calls it a Pentium 3 processor. Pentium 3, even though it's a Core 2 Quad 9500 2.8 gigahertz. This is not as bad as I thought. Standard VGA is installed, generic type disc. Apparently what you gotta do is go in here, set DMA. It's just to give it faster speed, I guess, but we need graphics drivers. This is networking stuff. It's a ethernet controller. We need to get INFs for the motherboard. It doesn't have sound card drivers, so we need to get that. I sneaker netted a disc um, with a bunch of drivers and this one right here is a USB driver for USB support. Universal USB 1 and 1.1 and 2. There we go. No. Welcome back, it's the next morning. I finally got some sleep and some much needed coffee. Mi vida es cafe. Now I'm gonna try some Forceware set up for old NVIDIA 9598ME drivers. Wish me luck. I think we can get it to work, we'll try. Otherwise I'll have to force it with the, or whatever. So it didn't know. And it says, oh. I hate you, and I'm like, thanks, great. So Windows 98, um, it's great fun. So maybe we can, uh, so you can force it. It's got an IO uh, conflicting range. It must be with the other device in here. See, there's a question mark on the driver, you can see, and Windows 98 doesn't know anything other than what you tell it. It's just very stupid. Standard VGA is what's in use right now. The real question is, since I removed that, did it come up? And bingo! Removing the uh, center VGA driver, uh, and it freed up those uh, IRQs, IO resources, and we have G4 6200 PCI Express. And it, uh, it's so much better. Oh, no, no, wait, <clears throat> once it applied those G4 settings, I can go to 1600 by 1024. Will it crash? True 30-bit, 32-bit color. Oh, you know, most of the games didn't go that high back then, which I set it at 1024 by 768. Dual monitor support? No, there's none there, but it's good to know. Here's the GeForce overlay panel. Thinks I have DirectX 6.1, uh, Pentium 3. It shows it as PCI Express. I wonder if you could see that. PCI Express times 16. And that's what this board has. Don't let anybody tell you you cannot get PCI Express cards chipset to work with Windows 98. So far, we've done it. it shows 128 meg and is Force for version 81.98. Anti-lazing, that's really not. Let's set it to high quality. And color profile, vertical sync, V-sync. Here's a screensaver for uh, Windows 98 in case anybody uh, care to see it. I mean, there's a bunch of the graphics for the graphics driver installed. It looks pretty cool. Why is there a screensaver? Back in the day, CRT said burn in. Burn in means that if you put a sta stationary image on too long on your CRT monitor, that image would be permanently burned into the screen so you would see it always there in the background. 
So, screensaver. First, problem solved. Got it. Yeah, if you've never worked with this OS before, and I haven't touched it for 25 years, I don't know, maybe 30, I don't know. The only thing I can stress at this point, patience. Patience is what you need for Windows 98. All right, so we're gonna try to get this Sound Blaster out of G2 going. Got some drivers, hopefully they work. Yeah, they kind of look like NT4 or Windows 98 drivers. Ugh, why? Did it fail? Probably. Hmm. Sound. Sound and video game controllers. The Windows. The WDM. So did it work? I guess there's a couple ways to try it. Ah, uh, I have sound now. It looks like it's there. Uh, there's a few other things here, like the... The old Windows intro screen. Music. In case anybody cares. I'm going to try to do a backup of my Windows 98 retro system before I get too much farther. Spent so many hours trying to get this to work and I'm going to do a bare metal backup onto an external USB hard drive. Clonezilla. I need to make an image for of the Windows 98 disk so I think that's what I want but you know. And then we say beginner mode. So I want to do a disk to local disk and target 320 gig. And then we go fingers crossed with the Clonezilla works and I didn't ruin anything. Now, let's see what if 3D Mark 2001 will run and if it can, We'll benchmark our system. About time. All right, so it sees my system info. And we want to benchmark. Go. Hundred and fifty nine FPS, two hundred and twenty FPS, two hundred. Nice. It's pretty good for Windows 98, uh, don't you think? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think 3D Mark 2001 is the last one that would um, run on 98. Now it bumps up, dumps the frames per second down. Okay. This is a higher end uh, graphics here for this test. Got a lot going on with the tree movement and the sunlight, so stressing it a bit. But back in the day in Windows 98, I think it would have been fine. Here's our 3D marks. 14,238, is that good? So in closing thoughts, what have we learned from this Windows 98 build? Number one, first and foremost, you're gonna need a lot of patience because things don't work the way they do in Windows 7, 10, or 11. You just have to have your research on hand, you have to Make sure that you've went through and gotten some of the drivers downloaded to try multiple versions. Sometimes they just won't work with your machine. If you want to make it a little easier on yourself, get yourself an IDE CD-ROM drive. Necessary, you need that. You want to make it even easier, you can grab yourself a floppy. Now you can get uh, converters for you know the floppy power from a four pin Molex or a SATA power 
and those are common. You can get those on Amazon. You can try to use a SATA CD-ROM with an adapter uh, if you have an older board. But the best thing to do is just get era appropriate equipment. Video cards that you know are supported, motherboards and they have chipsets that you know are supported. But the downside is those are expensive and tracking down working pieces, parts, and hardware for that era is really difficult. If you're gonna do one of these builds, you're gonna to have to play around with it. Bare metal backup. Uh, there's not a lot of options out there for backing up your machine, but if you're gonna be going through a lot of driver removals, driver reinstalls, system's gonna keep crashing. Right. So Knowledge of DOS commands, you have to create yourself a DOS, free DOS, Windows 98, on a US, bootable USB. Set up your boot order, make your boots from there. And you're gonna need that regardless so that you can go in and format your drives and set them up. So they can be recognized by Windows 98. I couldn't get the 8800 GTS 640 meg card to work, but that's to be expected. There, it wasn't even close to being out when Windows 98 was end of life. Uh, there weren't any drivers for it. I tried to force the drivers, it just wasn't happening. So I hope you all enjoyed this uh, journey back in time this is this nostalgia event and building one of these PCs can be fun but also frustrating. You may ask, why didn't you just create a VM? Well, I've done that. And sometimes the screen resolution, you know, they don't display right, so it's a pain in the butt. And I figured why not build a true machine? And not only that, I wanted to make it with the slightly newer parts. Like this motherboard has SATA and PCI Express. I got PCI Express card to work in Windows 98. I read out there and watched the videos, they say it can be done, or it's a pain in the butt. Very few have got it to work. I did it. Didn't work 100% of the time with all the games, but I still did it, and it leaves room for tweaking because I can go back and I can fix things, reinstall drivers, tweak the settings. I hope you all enjoyed this retro flashback build, and stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching. Remember this tech.